11,000 years ago, give or take, the most famous desert in the world, the Sahara, was all green and alive, with lakes, rivers, grasslands, and forests. Several thousand years later, it all changed. But then, in 1877, a Scottish businessman, Donald Mackenzie, got the ambitious idea to create a sea right in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Mackenzie thought he could dig a channel from a lagoon near Cape Juby in northwestern Africa south to a large island plain. He thought this area was very low, about 200 feet below sea level. If he flooded it with water from the Atlantic Ocean, he believed it would create a giant inland sea, about the size of 60,000 square miles. His idea was to use the new sea for commercial navigation to West Africa, which had plenty of valuable resources and markets with huge profits. Even though Mackenzie had never visited the Sahara himself, he read about other dry desert areas below sea level, like Tunisia and Egypt, which had salt lakes called chots. But the businessman was wrong about how elevated the plane was and didn't receive enough investment, so he didn't bring his project to life. A French geographer named Francois L. Roder and a diplomat who developed the Suez Canal came up with a similar idea a year later. Roder was inspired by Greek historian and geographer Herodotus, who mentioned the Bay of Triton in his writings. It's sort of an Atlantis of Africa, as there is no proof it really existed and no one can tell where exactly it was located. The salt plain could have been the seabed of the Bay of Triton and they could bring this sea back to life. So the French crew thought they could dig a channel from the Mediterranean Sea into a seasonal salt lake in present-day Tunisia. Water would flow into dry basins and create an inland sea. They were hoping it would be around 3,000 square miles in area and 75 feet deep. It would definitely require a huge amount of water. The new sea was supposed to turn the dry desert into a flourishing garden. The climate in the area would become cooler, and there would be more rainfall in the region. And here comes the best part for the French. They'd replace trade caravans with steamships and generate more profit. The cost of this project would be almost a billion dollars in today's money. Some people got worried that this new sea would create swamps full of dangerous bacteria. The French authorities stopped the project when they found out that many areas that would be involved were not below sea level, and the plan was just impossible. Now, Some people were also afraid it could tilt the Earth on its axis in a dangerous way, or cool down Europe to the point there would be a new ice age. But the idea lived on, and most recently, Egypt was considering flooding the Katara Depression in eastern Sahara through a canal or tunnels from the Mediterranean Sea. Water would evaporate quickly because of the desert climate, and a controlled balance of inflow and evaporation would let them generate huge amounts of hydroelectric power. But the project involved using atomic power to carve the new channel, and it didn't come to be. Famous writer Jules Verne described the flooding of the Sahara in his final novel, Invasion of the Sea. In the book, the scientists didn't proceed with their plans to turn the desert into a sea, but an earthquake did the job for them. So if the book comes to life, we might go swimming at a new Sahara Sea Resort in the future. Another massive flooding project has to do with Lake Eyrie in Australia. When it fills up completely, it becomes the largest lake on the continent. It happens only a few times a century, and when it does, the lake has the same salinity as seawater. When it dries up, it becomes extra salty. There was an idea to flood Lake Eyrie with seawater using a big canal or pipeline. It was supposed to make more water evaporate, and it could bring more rain to nearby areas. But when scientists mm. did their math, they saw that the extra rainfall would be very small. It is so tricky because Lake Eyrie is below sea level, and the area gets really hot, so lots of water evaporates every year. This means salt would build up very quickly, and the canal could get blocked by all the salt. If a big canal sent water to the lake, it could create a small sea. But without removing the salty water, the lake would collect tons of salt every year. In 1930, several British scientists suggested freeing 100,000 square miles of the North Sea from water. 
Huge dams were supposed to stop the water, and rivers flowing into that sea would be diverted somewhere else through canals. There would be a railroad connecting London to Berlin and a bridge across the English Channel. Antwerp and London would keep their access to the sea, and Rotterdam would lose its busy port. This idea never became a reality, but quite recently, one Dutch and one German scientist came up with a similar project. Their idea is to build a dam that would be 295 miles long between North Scotland and West Norway, and another section between West France and Southwest England. The scientists did some math and figured out that the project would cost somewhere between oh, 276 and $552 billion. Sounds like a lot of money, but it could save around 25 million people living in 14 European countries from high water. So if we spread that budget over 20 years, the cost would be 0.1% of their combined GDP. And although it looks like science fiction, we already have the technology to build something like that. The depth of the North Sea between France and England is hardly over 328 feet and is around 416 feet between Scotland and Norway. We can already build fixed platforms in depth over 1,600 feet, so it should be fine. This project would turn most of the North Sea into a huge freshwater lake with no tides. And it would mean huge changes in its ecosystem. Plus, it would become more expensive to ship goods across this sea. The fishing industry would lose huge amounts of money, and it would also cost a lot to build huge pumps to transfer all of the river water that currently flows into the North Sea to the other side of the dam. So, the best that scientists can do is monitor the situation and hope there won't be a need for such a dam. Meanwhile, a German architect and engineer came up with another huge dam idea in the 1930s. It was supposed to completely change the inside of Africa with giant inland seas. The plan was to build a huge dam on the Congo River where it flows through some deep narrow valleys after joining with the Kwa River. This would create a massive lake that would be bigger than the states of California, Nevada, and Oregon combined. Once this giant lake filled up, it would overflow into another river, which would then pour into the Sherry River, one of the rivers that feeds Lake Chad. Lake Chad would grow much larger, just like it was believed to be 10,000 years ago. The water would flow from the lake through Algeria and Tunisia right into the Mediterranean Sea. This new river would be big enough for ships to travel. It could replace trains or planes, and would make it much easier to move goods and people across Africa. Back then, people didn't think much about how this could hurt nature, and focused on how it would help the economy. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.